Hello, and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. I have a painting today that's um, different, very different, because I'm only using white and black. And I'm fortunate enough to have a group of wonderful Wilson Bickford trained instructors that I worked with, um, that I uh, got certified with, and we share our designs with each other. So today, I am doing a design from Marlene Harker. And she lives in British Columbia, and she runs the Easter Seal Camp in um, Winfield. Sorry, I look at my paper. At Winfield, and she has a group of disabled children that come every summer, and uh, she runs this camp there. So I'd like to thank her for letting me teach her her painting. Um, it's um, I'm using just titanium white and ivory black. I'm using a Wilson Bickford signature. Um, paints and brushes today along with his beveled edge canvas. This is a very interesting canvas. It has a really wide wood um, structure on the back, right now it's hammered in, um, into just a, an, an old canvas that I had that I didn't use. Um, this way it's easy to paint the sides. So you can see it has this nice thick beveled edge and we're going to do this painting right here on this nice beveled edge today. And um, I have already put uh, Fast Flow White, which is um, a Wilson Bickford's Fast Flow White, to make my um, the paint um, uh, glide very nicely, okay? So I'm just going to get started, and uh, here we go. I'm going to start with the brush that already had the um, Fast Flow in it, and I'm taking some black and just moving it over. Now, we're going to be doing... Uh, kind of like a value study because I'll be changing the values of the black. So it'll be dark, light, uh, medium, all shades of grays, okay? So I'm going to keep looking at my values and I have a little picture down here that I'm going to look at occasionally when you see me looking down and I'm going to find a nice mid value. Now, the reason why I need a mid-value to start with is my bottom of the painting here is going to be um, like a grassy knoll, and it's darker. We're making, I'm making the front darker to show a perspective um, and uh, give the painting depth, okay? So when I put in the sky, I can't have the sky be as dark as the grass. So here we go. I'm using a uh, number two, uh, or two-inch scenery brush and just loading in some gray. I'm just checking my color and we'll see if that's good. I'm making it just a little bit darker. As we uh, move down the canvas, I'll go a little lighter. So, here we go. I'm going to just start to paint the top. And some of this you may not be able to see because of the beveled edge, but you might be able to see one side and not the other. But basically I'll be doing the same on both sides, all right? so. I'm just starting to lay in some of a misty sky with this nice gray color. And I'm gonna go a little bit slower so you can see and hopefully follow along at home. I suggest at home that you get all your supplies out, watch the video one time, and then come back and paint along. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put a line across to try to show where my, um, kind of my horizon will be, and that's going to be about three quarters down. You can see I'm just kind of scruffing in this paint. All right, after I scruff in that paint, I'm going to come get a paper towel, and I'm going to wipe my brush off a little. When I have uh, paint on my brush, I'm painting. When I wipe it off and I go back, then I'm using that brush to blend. So you can see, just pushing real hard back and forth in this paper towel, and you can see how much comes off, but it's still gray, okay? So I'm gonna toss that right out, and I'm going to come back, and starting from the top, you might not be able to see that beveled edge, but I'm just coming back and forth and blending. So, I'm gonna blend. So it is going to make the sky a grayish color, but still it's going to have darks and lights. So the values of the gray will be different. I'm using an X stroke and going back and forth, you can see just painting in little X's, little X's, and you can see already, we have light gray, dark gray. As I come down closer to what is going to be the, this horizon here, 
I have a little bit more white in there. So it looks a little lighter as we come down the canvas. The only way um, to do that is just not to push so hard on the brush. I push harder up top, and then as I come down lower, I can um, push lighter. So I'm staying in the same spot to blend it out even more. The more you say, stay in the same spot, the blurrier that section will be. And it's very nice to have some blurry and some more distinct. Like up top, it's more distinct. Now, I, a, um, a bristle came out of the brush, which is uh, very uh, normal, especially when you're using new brushes. The way to get those up is you have to pick it up, and then you just wipe it off on a paper towel, okay? So um, it's normal to have a lot of bristles, uh, bristles come off. All the brushes do that, and little by little, you won't have as many bristles come off. All right. So I just want to step back a little bit because of the bevel. It's hard for me to, to see the whole thing, but I wanted you to see this great canvas. Um, these beveled canvases come in all different sizes. So um, you don't need a frame, of course, for it because what you would do is just hang it up as it is. You put your nail or whatever in the wall and you just hang it right on there. So I think I got a pretty interesting sky there. I got pretty lucky there for doing it for a couple of minutes, I think. So um, I will go on to the rest of the painting. I hope you see which way we're going with this now. I'm going to switch brushes and I'm taking what's called a uh, texture brush. This is a large texture brush and this will help with the texture on the canvas. Rather than have it smooth, this will have more texture. So I'm taking quite a bit of black. I'm just going over into my gray pile here, okay? And I'm loading the brush up, and I'll need a little bit more than that again. I'm putting some gray, and I want to make sure that this is darker. So you can see it is darker. I'm going to come across, put my horizon in, and start to get some of the grass in. All right, so getting a little more. I think I want a little darker. Now, on top of the grass is going to be rocks. Now, the rocks have to be darker than the grass, or they won't show. So it's, uh, that's why I'm paying so much attention to the, to the coloring this time. A lot of times in paintings, I'll say you don't have to worry about the color. Um, right now, I'm not really color is the value of the gray. So in here, I'm going to start putting in some grass. And this texture brush works very well with grass. I have my bounce brush that you can do um, grasses with also if you want to uh, use a beginner bounce brush. But because I'm on this beveled canvas and going more straight, um, I felt this time for this particular project it would be easier to use um, Wilson's texture brush. So I'm just coming back, going back and forth into the black, back again, and I'm going to start to layer some on. So I hope over here you can see, and this is what makes this uh, really unique, is this, um, this canvas, giving more depth to a picture with only two colors. So I hope that you'll um, consider picking up a couple of these canvases. Um, they're only sold. Um, online at Jerry's Artorama. So you can just look up Jerry's Artorama. There is some Jerry's Artorama stores here and there um, in different locations. I don't really know the locations, but you know, it's very easy to look, look them up and see, okay? I have some lights and some darks. Um, coming back again, I'm going to keep coming back in between the gray and the white. And I think already, because I can see it, I hope that you can already see um, the depth to this, and I hope that it already does look like a, a sky in the back on top. Because um, I, I could see it already, even though I'm standing right up front. It does, my, my grassy knoll doesn't have to be even. It's not like a regular horizon, like um, you know my other paintings where I was doing um, oceans and all, where the horizon should be straight. I'm making it a little darker, because I think I can still get my dark rocks in there anyway, okay? And I can see some spaces and that's okay. Gives a little bit more interest to the painting. I just made it a little darker yet again. So if I make it too dark, I won't be able to put those rocks where that real dark is. But I like the idea of having it darker on the bottom. Like I said, I love the idea of having a, a, the depth in the painting and having it be more dramatic. So when I uh, paint, I I seem to like to use a little bit um, 
heavier handed and, and uh, more colors and darker colors. It just seems like it's, it's my way. And that's one of the reasons when I looked at um, her painting, when I saw it online, was I said, that is so cool that she did this in black and white. So people that want to start oil painting, what a good way to start. You only would need to buy black and white and a couple brushes and you're on your way to trying. And of course you can always contact me. My information will be there later. Um, at the end of the show, I'll give it to you again. And you can write to me or call me and I'll be very happy to help you. I teach beginners. I have beginner classes. I only teach beginner classes. Even if I call one of my classes advanced, it only means that it is advanced for my students. It's not necessarily an actual advanced class. Um, so, enough said about that. Uh, here we go, back to the bottom of the bevel. So it's very easy to paint. Of course, it has to be on a board because if this bevel, of course, is on an easel, you wouldn't be able to get the bottom of it. And then what you can do is you can just leave your... Um, your beveled canvas there to dry and then in a couple weeks you could just uh, push those nails out from the back with a small hammer and you're all set. All right so I think that might be pretty good. I may just put a little bit more dark down here really make that pop out make it dark on the bottom and I'm trying not to use too much paint I just want to have a little bit of darks and lights here and there. And I think that I do have some darks and lights. I just don't want to have lining in it, you know, like lines like this uh, going straight across. So I'm just kind of breaking up some of those lines now, okay? Uh, take a look back at her picture. I see in her picture that she has a little bit of light area uh, coming, you know, in here. So what I could do is wipe out my brush a little bit and make another value of a very light gray, maybe not quite that light. See, so I'm just moving the colors back and forth. I'm just gonna tap that brush a little. Then I can come in here and just put a little bit of uh, some light gray. And then you can see it looks more like grasses, okay? Just put a little bit of here, just here and there. And when you're at home, you'll look at it and if it doesn't look quite right, then you just go back and fix it. It's not anything that can't be fixed. I don't wanna over tap and blend because I like the idea of the texture. And here I kind of over tapped a little bit and lost some of that texture. So I'm going to stop right there before I do over blend or blend with a texture brush, which we're not supposed to be doing because we want that texture. Okay, so next what I'd like to do is put in a couple of uh, uh, fence posts. So I'm taking the black on a small palette knife and I'm going to move this black over. I probably didn't have to move it over, but I think it'll relate to the camera better. There we go. So taking the black and just gonna scrape up some of this just to tone it down a little bit, lighten it up a bit. I don't want it to be quite that dark. So you can see I'm just using whatever I have there and we have a little bit of a marbling effect. Now, if I keep mixing and mixing the paint, it's going to turn gray, but I have a marbling effect because I did not mix it and keep mixing, okay? So what I did, I'm gonna just wipe this off so you can see better. I have the palette knife, I'm coming across and I'm scraping up a bead. Now, she has in her painting, um, her she has two posts. The posts are not exactly in the middle. They're a little bit over um, from the way that I, I see her painting. So I'm gonna start on this side and I'm just going to gently put the knife down and start to pull over a fence post. Okay, so I'm going to come back again get a little more, and I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna pull it on the other side of the knife. And I'm going to just put it in right there. It doesn't have to be perfect, an old falling apart fence post. I'm just gonna fill in a little bit of those white spots there. Now, I think that that coloring is good because it's still a contrast. We still wanna use every shade of grain black that we possibly can. More contrast and more interest in the painting. Now, a few inches apart from it, maybe three or four inches, um, there is a, another fence post. So, same thing. Gonna come in and pull over another post. Okay? So you can hear it scraping on there, that's okay. I'm gonna scrape some of that off. Come over, put it on the other side, and gonna pull it over. Now, that one got a little bigger. That's okay too. And I know I say that a lot, that's okay because it is okay. 
I could just come over if I want to have it be a little bit more even. It's okay. Look, just make the other one a little bigger. Now, they might be a little crooked. That's okay too. Now, what I'd like to do is, uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to put some highlight in those fences. So I'm going to take my white, move it over. I don't want it real, real white. We don't want it looking like snow. So I moved some of that gray in there. Same thing. Marbleized it a little bit, taking a little, and sorry, going to come to the other side first. And I'm going to put a little bit of the gray. And I see I have a hair in there. I'm not going to fuss with that one right now. I don't know if that's even showing, but, and see, I'm just putting on this little highlight, and it's not, not exactly called a highlight. It could just be, you know, breaks in the fence post, all right? So, I think I want a little bit more. I'm just looking back at it saying, no, oh, I think it can use a little bit more. And then we have this real rustic looking fence post. See, I'm just dabbing it and pulling it and dabbing it and pulling it. And still, different values, all right? Now, on top of that fence post, I'll just take a little bit of black on the tip of this, tip of the knife. And this is the small knife. I might have said that before. And in the line, uh, signature line, there's a small knife and a big one. I'm just going to dab some on there just to break up the top of that fence. Oops, I got a big pile of paint there. And I'm just going to scrape. I'll try to scrape that up a little bit. There we go. So I can just dab that over, move it down a little bit. That's all. I can come back, put a little highlight. So that was just me making a little bit of a mess, and then I could just come back and see that? Easy, easy fixing. All right, so this is a fantastic painting for uh, someone that never painted before, okay? Because this is some, everybody can do this one. Now, I'm going to change brushes, and um, I'm going to take a uh, long liner brush, okay? There's a short uh, script liner, and then there's a long liner brush. I'm going to dip in a little bit of paint thinner, and I'm going to come over to my gray and fill this brush by rolling it around. Okay, and I'm getting like a mid-tone gray. What I'd like to do is add some wire, almost like a barb wire on there, and give, give a lot of interest. And I'll check the color first and see how it goes. Okay, it might be okay, just holding it here. So I'm going to do three rows, and I'm going to wiggle it. So I'm just going to start here and, oops, and just wiggle. You see I'm just laying the tip of the brush down, and I'm just wiggling. I have to come back, get more paint, and I'm going to try to anchor my arm a little and wiggle. Now, because of the beveled canvas, I'm going all the way over to the other side. That's what's going to give this painting even more interest because of this beveled canvas. Here we go. So, coming over again, I, and she has three in hers, and I like the idea of having an uneven number. And I'm just wiggling in this wire over to the side. Last one, I do like this gray color. I might be like a little bit going downhill with it, and that's okay too. Either way it goes is fine. It's an old fence. Now, from this side, I might have a little problem doing it from this side, but I'm going to give it a shot this way so you can see. There we go. Just wiggling it, wiggling, wiggling, all the way to the side, coming back. You can see the uh, paint thinner actually dries, okay? So um, it dries so fast, you have to keep coming back and putting more on your brush. And this is not a good angle for me, but I think that you get the idea of it, all right? This, um, this brush is wonderful. It gets a little bit of taking, of getting used to. If you push too hard, you will get big uh, lining, of course, the harder you push. You have to learn just to drag the tip. It's better to load up the brush and let the paint go down to the tip a little, and that helps. Now, she has a little bit of the um, barbed wire on here. I don't know what you would call these little kind of hook things that come up. and. The only way you can do these is you just put little V's. So again, I'm using the tip of the brush and I'm making just little marks, okay? I'm gonna dip back in my um, paint thinner, which today I happen to be using the uh, Wilson Bickford odorless paint thinner, uh, which is nice because there is no odor to it. So um, you don't have to worry if you don't have a really, you know, 
windows are well ventilated. Now, I can already see I'm kind of making them um, too, too close, like in the same pattern, and that's something that we don't want to do. So I think I'll like move over here and break that pattern up. I can see I started to make that pattern. And that's just how your eye goes. So I'm going to try to put some of these in between. I'm just kind of making little, little markings, and I don't want them even. So I'm just kind of going to make a little less here and there and just put these markings in. Now at home, you'll have plenty of time uh, to, make your, to make your little barbed wire. But you can see the difference um, from plain to now having um, you know, a better look to it. It gives it uh, much more interest. Just putting little, little uh, X's and V's. And that's really what I'm doing is I'm just making like these little V's and X's. Whichever, it's kind of whichever way the brush is coming out. Sometimes they're coming out X's, sometimes they're coming out V's. Either way is fine. So here we go. I'm going to put a couple more of these. And I think that might be enough. I can always add more later. While I have this brush in my hand with this color, um, I'm just going to add a little bit more of the dark color. I'm going to dip back again in the thinner. And you can see how it's getting nice and thin. I'm rolling the brush out. I'll hold the brush up. I'd like to put in some grasses. Now, the way that you put grasses is you your arm should be up. It shouldn't be leaning on you. So it gives you um, uh, more of an opportunity to get uh, straighter, straighter grass and not have it be thick. Because uh, if your arm is down, you have a tendency of pushing more. So I'm lifting my arm up. And I'm going to just pull some thin grasses up, going whichever way, just for, for interest and to show that this is kind of in the back. The more we put here, the more everything will look in back of it. So here we go, put a few more grasses. And same thing, you can come and put as many grasses or as little grasses as you want. I would like to come and put some over here on the side, which I can barely see here what I'm doing because I don't want to cover it. I hope that you can, can see it. I'm just pulling up the grasses, OK? Um, come in and put a little more. Now, same thing. At home, you'll have plenty of time. You can put in as many as little grasses. But if you're going to use this beveled uh, canvas, make sure you do some the sides, because that's really going to help a lot. I'm going to put a few tall ones in here. I'm hoping that then you can see that better. I'm making like little groups, some shorter, some longer. Um, I'll pull a couple up. You can see I'm just pulling them up. No rhyme or reason to this, making little groupings. We don't want them all the same size, OK? So that's about all that she put. While I have this color uh, on, this, on this brush, I'm going to go and put a couple birds in here. Now, I'm going to pick a white part of the sky. This way, they show out a little more. So I can put them here. I can put them here, any place. I think I'm going to put them a little up here and just a simple V an extended V. So in other words, instead of a V that you would just draw a V, I'm just widening in, uh, wide, making it wider, widening. I don't even know if that's a word. Um, just widening my V. OK, so that one kind of looks like a, uh, a duck. <laughs> but you get the idea of that. You can just come in and put a couple birds in. And I'll, I may rub that one out uh, later on. I just want to make sure I get the lesson in first, because I slipped a little with that one. And uh, well, that does kind of look like a duck, so we might leave that. I just want to put a couple more little tiny grasses in here because it look, just looked a little empty. So I hope you can see that. I'll try to stay to the side a little more. And there we go, a couple little grasses. OK. And now what we will do is, well, what we will, I will do is go back to my knife. I'm going to get some dark black right now. Black, black, black paint, OK? And I'm going to put in some rocks in, in this uh, foreground. So I have a lot of paint on there. And I'm just going to put nice big rock. I see she's got a nice big rock up here. I'm going to put this nice big rock. Now, again, back to what I said before about value. If this background was any darker, this rock may not show, OK? So I hope that makes sense to everybody. I'm um, going to come in and. Just put a couple of rocks here. And I want to make them different shapes and different sizes. Um, that one I can see is too close to my one down here. So I can change the shape of it a little bit. Oops, oh, look what I did. We don't want white in there yet. So I'm just coming and wiping that off. That's one of my whoops moments. Uh, that happens. 
All right, I'm coming in and I will put another rock. I, I even will put some on the side here, which when she did this painting, she didn't use that beveled edge. So she probably is going to say, oh, I'd like to use that beveled edge. I'm going to change the side of the paint and I'm going to try to do it overhand over here, hoping that you can see it. So there's a little rock. Okay, I got some white paint on there. I'll end up making that a highlight there rather than wipe my knife off again. I don't know where that knife, that white's coming from, but all I have to do is move some of that black over, and there we go. Now, I would spend more time um, on my rocks because right now I can see they're all coming out kind of the same shape because I'm just trying to hurry and get them on here. Um, so I want to make some smaller, some larger. You can add as many as you want. I'll just dab a few here just so they look like little pebbles instead. Um, again, coming back. Oh, that's where the white was in my black. That's what happened. So I'll come in and put a little grouping maybe. So pretty much you can just come in and just add these here and there, okay? Now, I think I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, maybe put another one up here a little, and that might be it, because I can always uh, take a little more time and change these, these shapes of these rocks and add more. What I do want to do is come in with my texture brush and tap a little bit on the bottom. Oop, that had a little bit too much white in there. I just want to tap this in a little just so they look like they're not floating on top, okay? So now what I should have done was washed, um, wiped out my brush a little, which I didn't. So now I have a little, more, little bit more white in there than I would have liked to, but it's okay. As long as you guys are getting the idea of it, it actually kind of made that rock um, stand out a little bit more. I hope I'm doing uh, justice to uh, Marlene's painting. Um, I'm going to take some white, move it over into some black. I'm just making a little bit of gray. And what I can do is I can come in now and just dab a little bit on, on these rocks in different areas. I'm just letting this paint break off and like attach to this, um, to the other rocks, and that is going to give it like a natural, a natural look, like it's broken up a little bit, the rock, and like it has some, some you know, lining in it and some grooves and all. Now, like I said, this angle is bad for me, so um, as long as you can see up here, you'll get a better idea of what I'm doing. Um, and I hope that you like this lesson. I hope that this lesson is a lesson that you might say, oh, you know what, I can try. Um, great lesson for anybody, senior citizens, teenagers, anybody. Okay, there we go. And I, I think that's, that's pretty good. I may, um, I, I probably would maybe add a couple rocks or pay a little more attention to the shape of them. I see they kind of look a little bit pyramidy there. So, you know, what I would do is when I have time is I would take the little time and come in and maybe break them up a little and then come back and put another highlight on. So now it looks, you know, that one like maybe looks like a double rock. So, um, Really, anybody can do this. A couple of um, brushes, and you'll be on your way to being an oil painter. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, I hope that I did her, uh, her painting justice, and I hope that you will um, try these uh, beveled edges and the, the products that I've, I've said today. And uh, you can reach me at, um, on Facebook at Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting slash Wilson Bickford, New Jersey, or you can come to my website at www.lucysworldofpainting.com and um, you can come and see uh, my videos there and you can uh, pick up uh, some tips and how to use my bounce brush and a little bit about my products while you're there. And I, um, I hope you'll watch all my shows and share them with your friends. Uh, thanks again for tuning in.